Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Battletech. So, Aerospace Fighter. While Battlemech is the king of battlefield, and artillery like to perform regicide, ASF reminds all those stuck on the ground that there's a battlefield nothing else could fight at. Bombing, strafing, dogfighting, ASF presents a whole new dynamic to Battletech and frankly, I have no idea how people play this before Megamech was released. Anyway, since this is the first ASF I'm going to review, and it's Clanner this round, I might as well review the biggest Omni fighters ever, the Kyrgyz. I'm fairly certain the text-to-speech program will spell this wrongly, so bear with it here. Anyway, history. Being the fourth Omni fighter fielded by Clan in history, of course it's Clan Ghost Bear that first fielded this 100 tons of flying bricks, placing it at the top of the heavy class. Oh yes, ASF don't have assault class, heavy class goes from 75 tons to 100 tons. Sitting inside the frame is a 300 extra light reactor, giving the fighter a maximum acceleration of 4G. That might sound fast but in relative to other ASF, this is very slow. 5 tons of fuel tank gives it a decent flight time and 20 fixed double heat sinks sit within its frame. That sounds like a lot, but for most of its configs, it's barely enough. 16 tons of standard armor covered the frame, good, but not exactly enough for a 100 tonner. However, it allows Kyrgyz to pack a pod space of 56.5 tons, which is way more than that of the freaking dire wolf. For its prime config, Kyrgyz is equipped with one LBX-10 in the nose, one gauze rifle and one ER large in each wing, along with two streak SRM-6 and an ER Simon in the aft. It's clear why the ghost bear put this as the prime, all forward guns can be fired at practically all range without reaching the heat cap at all, and the aft weapons are enough of a deterrent for any tailing interceptors. However, the LBX-10, despite having two tons of ammo, can only use cluster round. If you can tell from how deadpan I sounded, more than usual at least, it's because this config is kinda boring even if practical. Normally, I don't do that, but when the rest of the configs possess a certain level of insanity, this almost seems bland. Like for example, Alpha has two ERPPC in the nose, two large pulse and an LBX2 in each wing, with an ER large and ER Simon in the aft. This config has only four more heat sinks, which is definitely not enough for the sheer heat produced by everything. And with how vulnerable ASF is to overheating, Alpha striking is not recommended. But the sheer amount of guns do give the Alpha a sustainable firepower even as it starts losing guns. On top of having enough firepower to make any dropship or small warship sweats, the aft ER large is more than capable of tagging any interceptors at long range. The Alpha is truly well armed and well defended. Bravo is the missile support config, packing 5 LRM-20, one in the nose and the rest in wings, along with 3 ERPPC in each forward section, one medium pulse at the aft to fend off the interceptor and 6 more heat sinks to vent the heat. Macross missile massacre do not even begin to describe this. Sadly, those launchers will only last for 6 turns, then it's back to just ERPPC barrage which, with 3 of them, still extremely terrifying. Charlie is the close range support config, perhaps a little too close in this case. In its nose, it has an Ultra Auto 20 along with 2 large pulse and a ER Simon, each wing only has a single ERPPC and 2 ER large provide more than sufficient firepower to defend its rear. In both forward and backward, Charlie has enough long-range firepower to deal with any threat in its way, but its key feature is the 10-ton cargo hold hidden within its belly, enough to carry two points of elementals which can be deployed as a boarding party. Or by literally bombing the target with squads of angry toads. And if the battle armor points have problem with breaching the target, any forward gun on Charlie works quite well as a door opener. Delta is another missile support config, this time packing two ATM-12 in each wing, along with two ER large, one ER medium and one medium pulse in the nose, and a single ER Simon at the aft. Five additional heat sinks have also been provided, but not enough for all forward weapons at all. Unlike Bravo, the ATM launchers come with three tons of missiles each this time, more than enough for any encounter, and since ATM could actually switch missile type, a he barrage from all launchers are going to be very painful for the target. But also unlike Bravo, when it actually ran out, it's not gonna be as well armed. Then again, everything else is probably dead at this point. The only problem with this config is the poorly armed aft section, so Delta definitely need escorts to protect its rear. Finally, Epsilon, the newest of all configs, comes packing with newest technology from Clan Hell's horses, 
the hyper assault gauze. Packing one hack 40 in each wing with two large pulse in the nose and a single ER Simon in the aft, Epsilon could easily knock out a thin skinned fighter with the sheer amount of crits produced, and with only 10 tons of ammo for it, it can fire for a long time. On top of that, it comes packing with an active probe and ECM suite, the former can neutralize ECM cloud from large crafts such as dropships or warships, the latter makes Epsilon harder to be shot at. In a large scale space battle, Epsilon will be a very indispensable electronic warfare fighter, a very durable one. All in all, King Ease is an amazing Omni fighter that served well as a heavy fire support fighters in a wide variety of roles. However, even with its amazing capability, King Ease is slow and not quite as well armored as its mass would suggest, heavy escort is a must have for it to work well. But let's be real here, this thing can drop elementals like bombs, that makes up for any flaws it has. Mm -hmm.